This is pre-calculus lesson 8.4 on page 547. So now this is application of what we've learned, particularly with um, the sine function and the cosine function. All right, so let's just remind ourselves. The untransformed uh, cosine function begins at one, goes down to negative one, and completes a cycle in the period of two pi, right? Um, there are four key points, and that is at, F, at um, every uh, half a quadrant, right? At, if I'm looking at, you know, the uh, unit circle, it's at zero, it's at pi over two, it's at pi, it's at three pi over two, all the way back to two pi. So every half a pi, that's pi over two. That's pi, that's three pi over two, all right? The, that's the cosine curve. The sine curve begins at zero, goes up, back down, and around like that, okay? So now we're gonna have word problems where we're gonna have to look at writing the actual function, either given the curve or given some information. All right, so let's, let's look at the equation as well. So we we'll might need to look visually at a graph or look at information that is given. All right, so let's remind ourselves everything, and I'll just leave this up on the board. F of X equals A. That's my amplitude, remember? That's how high up it goes above that x-axis and how low it goes above the x-axis. I'll just use the sign. B tells us the period. Remember the period is equal to two pi over B. That's that value. The period tells us how long it, it takes to complete a cycle, all right? The B tells us how many cycles it completes over over between zero and two pi, all right? Bt plus c, that c is a horizontal or a phase shift left or right. Um, and remember, if it's positive, it's to the left. If it's negative, it's to the right, plus d. d is a vertical shift up or down so that you have a new imaginary X axis. All right, so let's look at um, the first example. All right, so I've, I've hurt my wrist, so I'm having, I'm having a little hard time here. You can probably see. All right, so anyway, we're looking at example one. All right, and example one says, um, we give me a, a sine curve. Give me the sine function, okay? Now this would be easy if we were doing, if we were uh, writing the cosine function because look, it begins up, which is what the cosine function does. It goes down and comes back up. But that actually could help us uh, to know what the period is, the period to complete, because it doesn't matter if you're looking at the sine or the cosine, you can still figure out the period, all right? All right, so the period that it's gonna complete it in is, is pi. All right, so my period here is going to be pi. So what's my <clears throat> B value? My B value has to be two, and you can see that. It completes two cycles between zero and two pi. Look, one, two, all right? So my B value, is going to be two. All right, now, um, let's look at where, has it been shifted up or has it been shifted down? And it has been shifted up. It's gone from zero to one. These are counting by one. So um, my D value is going to be positive one. <clears throat> All right. 
Now, what is my amplitude? That's how high it goes above it, that new imaginary axis, and how low it goes. Look, it goes one, two, three. Or you could use the formulas, right? The amplitude is really the max four minus the min, so that'd be minus negative two, which is six, divided by two, which is three. So really my A value is the maximum minus the min over two. So my A value is going to be three. Now I need to figure out where does the sine curve begin? All right, remember the sine curve um, starts at zero, goes up. So let's go to the right and figure out where it goes up first. So I'm looking at this new X axis here. And at the X axis right here, and they've marked it for you, three pi over four. Three pi over four. So it's been shifted to the right three pi over four. I'm sorry, yeah, three pi over four, yeah. So my C value is going to be three pi over four. Well, since I have a C value, that is going to affect my B value. Um, I could write, so I have A, B, C, D. I could write it like this, three times the sign. Write my B value outside the parentheses because that two has already been factored out, right? And then I would write T. It's been shifted to the right, so I'm gonna put minus three pi over four plus one. All right, in your textbook, they didn't leave the two out. They, multi they distributed that two and put it inside the parentheses. So they come up with three sine two t. Then when I multiply two times three pi over four, that becomes two. So it's minus three pi over two plus one. All right, so looking at a curve, I could come up with a sine or a cosine um, curve uh, function, all right? Example two, we're only gonna go over three examples. Example two <clears throat> is a rotating wheel. All right, so before we look at the example, <clears throat> let's see what I can erase here, huh? Before we look at the example, I want to just tie in period, which is two pi <clears throat> over B, all right? To distance equals rate times time, all right? Every time I set that down, it moves. All right, so distance equals rate times time. And if I just solve for time, I'm just dividing by the rate like that. This is exactly the period. So the period is the time. The distance is the two pi and the rate is my B value. Okay. So we're just going to tie that in because um, the rate is like miles per hour in, in this problem, it's going to look like radians per second um, <clears throat> and uh, um, something like that, right? Your distance is probably always gonna be two pi. All right, so looking at example two. So as I read through this, um, I, I'm gonna take note of what some of the examples are, what, what some of the A, B, C, D values are, all right? All right, so a wheel with a radius of two centimeters. That's how high we're going up and how low. So that's gonna be my amplitude. All right, how high we're going, your radius is always gonna be your amplitude. <clears throat> is rotating clockwise at three radians per second. That's the rate, that's right here. So my rate, which is my B value, right? 
is three radians per second. Um, a free hanging rod, 10 centimeters long. All right, so that is going to be, um, we've been shifted it, we shifted it down 10, right? We've gone, we've gone from here at zero, zero, down 10. So that's gonna be, my D value <clears throat> is gonna be negative 10, all right? So a free hanging rod, 10 centimeters long, is connected to the edge of the wheel at point P and remains vertical as the wheel rotates. Look at question A. Assuming that the center of the wheel is at the origin and that P is at two zero, two being the amplitude, all right? At time zero, find a function that describes the Y coordinate of the tip E of the rod at time. Okay, so look what's gonna happen. We're thinking sine or cosine, what's gonna happen? It goes up first and then down. Remember with the cosine, we go down first and then up. With the sine curve, we go up first and then down. So we're going up first and then down. And so I'm thinking definitely it's the sine curve, all right? Now, let's plug in our numbers. Two was the A value, all right? Three was the rate per second. All right, so if we were just figuring out our period, the period would be two pi all the way around, because it's a, it's a whole circle, all the way around. So that would tell me how long would it take to complete one cycle? Two thirds pi. So there are three cycles over a period of z, zero to two pi. All right, but, but this is our b value. So it's three t. We, ha we don't have a C. We've not been shifted left or right. So then it would just be minus 10. All right. Now B says, um, what is the first time that the tip E of the rod will be at a height of negative nine centimeters? So you're just gonna set this at negative nine. And then you're gonna solve it at this point. Uh, Thomas, can you get my calculator out of my bag over there by the desk, please? All right, I'm gonna add 10 on both sides. So that one equals two sine of three T. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by two so that I have one half equals the sine of three T. Now I'm gonna do the inverse. Um, remembering with the inverse, thank you. Um, with the inverse for the sine, what quadrants are we in? We're in the first and the fourth, all right? We're in the first and the fourth quadrant. All right, so 3T is what, is what um, the inverse sine of one half is gonna be inverse sine of one half. All right, now this is on our unit circle. All right, and at one half, where is it one half? Remember the sine goes down and up, so it goes from zero, one. All right, so it's gonna be pi over six. All right, so this is gonna be pi. I'm going a little low, huh? Pi over six is going to be the value of three T. Now, I could divide, um, uh, but it's really pi over six plus two K pi because you know, the repeating cycle, right? So it's gonna equal pi over six plus minus two K pi. 
I don't want to know what 3T is. I want to know what, what T is. So I'm going, to, I'm going to multiply. Instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply every term by 1 third. And so we end up with T equals pi over 18 plus minus 2K pi over 3. And that's how we get that solution in the textbook. All right, now example three. I'm gonna leave this up here. Distance equals rate times time. Um, but actually, I'm just gonna leave this up here. The period is like the time. Two pi is the distance. B is the rate. All right, so. Let's look at example three. Example three says, let me go to the next page of my book. All right, suppose that a weight hanging from a spring is set into motion by an upward push. Okay, it's going up first and then it's going down. So in my mind, I'm saying cosine. This is definitely the cosine because it's going up first, then down. It takes five seconds to complete one cycle. That's the period. That's the time. All right, so period, our time, is five seconds. So that's going to equal 2 pi over b. I don't have my b value here. They gave me seconds. Not, they didn't give me the b value. In example two, it was um, seconds per radian, right? That is the B value. Uh, when it just gives you seconds, um, that is the period, all right? It takes to complete one cycle because that's, that's, that's right how many cycles there are gonna be. Five seconds to complete one cycle of moving from its equilibrium position to eight centimeters above it, then drops eight centimeters below it. That's gonna be my amplitude. My amplitude is going to be eight. And finally, returning to its um, <clears throat> equilibrium position. All right, so because we're at equilibrium, there's no phase shift left or right. Um, but we're going up first. Actually, I said that wrong. That's not the, that's not, that's the sign, right? We go up first. I don't know why I said the sign. The cosine will go down first. This is going up first, just like the sine, all right? So it goes up first, down, and back. So I absolutely would write um, a sine function. All right, we only have two items here. We have to solve for B. Now, we have five equals two pi over B. Remember, we can swap our extremes. B is two pi over five. That's my B value. So if I were writing the curve, it would be f of x equals my amplitude, which is eight, the sine of two pi over five t. That would be my function. All right, and that's what it said. Find a sinusoidal uh, function to represent that. All right, and sketch B was sketch a graph of the function that you wrote, all right? So if it takes five seconds to complete it, I'm going from zero to five seconds. I'm going up to five, up to eight, right? Not five, I don't know why I said. And down to negative eight. It's going to complete it in five seconds, one curve, one complete, cycle. Remember, we're going up first down, so we need our three points. And remember, um, they're divided into four. Fourths, one, two, three, four, right? So I'm just going to take five. Five divided by four, that's going to be the first, that's going to be five-fourths of a second, right? Now, this is going to be right in the middle, so it's going to be five-halves. All right, 
Now, this is three-fourths of the whole, right? So it's five, five, and I want to know what three-fourths of that is. So that's uh, 15 fourths. What is 15 fourths? Um, it's 3.75, but you can leave it at 15. I couldn't simplify it, right? No, 15 fourths. All right, so we start here. We're going up to eight. We're coming back down here at five halves. We're going back to negative eight in here. And that would be our curve. All right, D says in the first five seconds, that's one cycle, when will the height be six centimeters below? So like six centimeters right here, below the equilibrium position. Um, and so you want to know when your Y value is going to be at negative six. All right, so that's negative six equals eight times the sine of two pi over five T. Then you would divide by the eight, both sides. So now we have negative six eighths. What's negative six eighths? I'll go ahead and write negative six eighths and then simplify it. Two pi over five t. That's divisible by two, so that's negative three fourths. All right, so this is negative three fourths. Inverse sine, right? Inverse sine equals two pi over five t. Um, and what is the inverse sine? Second sine, negative three-fourths. Remember, that's going to be my fourth quadrant, right? Uh, negative three divided by four. Oh, my, I'm not in radians. <clears throat> Quickly, I realized that. I needed to be in radians, so I don't know if you're in radians either. Negative three divided by four. All right, so this value is negative 0. 0.8481 is what 2 pi over 5 t is. And we could continue to solve. I'm going to go maybe over here. Negative 0. 0.8481 equals 2 pi over 5t. Now I'm going to multiply by 5 over 2 pi so that I'm solving for t. And when I do that, well, let's, I get, I already did it. t is negative 0.6749. T is negative point six four. Wait, six seven four nine. I'm just going to do that times five divided by two times pi. Okay, it's just point six six. Well, I get in my. I just got it. Oh, I think I added instead of multiplying. So it's negative six, seven, four, nine. Six, seven, four, nine. Of course, I did it wrong in my calculator just now. Negative six, seven, four, nine. But then I have to take that from five because remember, it's, it's the down. I'm going to five and down. So it's five minus point six, seven, four, nine. And my T value is four point three, two, four point three, two, five, one. Um, 
and then we're gonna go in the other direction, but I'm not gonna put anything this difficult on your test because we've not seen each other. Um, probably, well, I'll go over some ones like will be on your test, okay?